Hi, this is Paul Turner with Venify. In this segment, we're going to talk about risks to private keys. It goes without saying that the effectiveness of your encryption depends on how well you secure your private keys. And unfortunately, most organizations don't implement very good security practices around their private keys. In fact, I think it's pretty safe to say that the scenarios we're going to walk through today are pretty prevalent across most organizations. So let's go ahead and jump into this. <clears throat> so what we have here today is a um, server, and that server uh, has uh, some clients that are going to be connecting. Uh, they're going to be performing very secure or transactions that need high security, you know, credit card or um, online e-commerce, whatever it might be, right? So we want to secure this connection. And as the administrator of this system, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go get a certificate for this because we're pretty bright. You know, we understand what we need to do to uh, secure a connection. Frankly, what's interesting is many administrators that are responsible for web servers, they're not really encryption experts. So in many cases, they don't realize that with that certificate, there's actually something called a private key. And um, that's actually a good thing in many cases that they don't know there's a private key because then they don't know that they can make a copy of it. Because that private key is stored in a file uh, protected with a password that they actually uh, create or uh, assign when they create that, uh, that uh, request for the certificate. <clears throat> and if they know that that private key is of value, they could make a copy of it. And in fact, it's, it's a little bit uh, more precarious than just this because the best practice today is to load balance any mission critical application and so now that we have multiple servers we have to take and make a copy of that private key and certificate across each one of those systems so now the private key and the certificate are in motion you know they, they're being handled directly by somebody more than once and typically for a group of servers like this you're gonna have a group of people involved and effectively what you end up with is a group of people that have direct access to that private key and can potentially make a copy. And again, what we're trying to do is reduce the risk of these private keys and the more people that have copies of the private keys, um, the, the less security you have for them. So I mentioned that these uh, certificates, or excuse me, these private keys are protected by a password. They're stored in a file and um, that file is encrypted with a password. And frankly, generally, I think we can all imagine that the passwords that administrators use, because there aren't any real controls um, on those, are probably not the strongest, probably because they're the easiest to remember. In fact, it's a little bit even worse than that, because in addition to using weak passwords, most administrators never change them. And the reason for this is that if they do change them, they also have to update the application that's calling and, and opening up these uh, private key files. And if they forget to do that, they'll have downtime. So many administrators, after learning that lesson, uh, decide, you know what, I'm not going to change that that password anymore because it's, uh, it's bitten me before. So now we kind of fall into a bad practice of not changing that uh, that password. The next kind of bad practice is, in fact, uh, many administrators or administrative groups will end up using the same password across multiple different applications and the private keys um, for those applications. Again, it's easiest for them to have one password that they can kind of share with new people coming into the group, and uh, so they, they kind of fall into this practice of doing that. Again, the challenge now is that we've opened up the risk to even more groups because there's probably a different group of administrators uh, responsible for this uh, set of servers than this set of servers, but all of them know the passwords for the private keys. Now, one additional step here, or one, one additional factor in all this is, this is a mission critical server or set of servers, as we had mentioned. And so we want to, as an organization, start tracking things, the security of the connection, the performance, maybe the experience that the customers are having. And so we're going to place some systems to watch the traffic going back and forth. The challenge with this is that when we do this, these systems can't see the traffic because it's all encrypted. Well, the administrators of these systems will oft often say, well, you know, maybe what we can do is we can decrypt that traffic. So they'll go to this group and say, hey, I'd like to get a copy of the private key, and lo and behold, often they get that private key, or if, if they're going to be able to do anything, they, they need a copy of that private key. So now we have even more administrators that have access to the private key. 
And darn it if those administrators don't leave periodically. Uh, typically, on average, it's about once every 18 months that an administrator um, will uh, leave an organization or a new one comes in. So you can imagine this creates quite a bit of risk in, in large enterprises. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the segment, it's a pretty prevalent practice or, or set of practices that are used. You can check in your own organization to see if, in fact, this is the way that things are typically done. And you, I think you're pretty likely to find that that's the case. Now, if you're interested in you know, how you might improve security, there's a variety of ways. Let's look at one in particular. Um, Basically, what you want to do is you want to take an intermediate um, between the administrators and the keys um, that they're uh, responsible for. Instead of having them manage them directly, what you do is you place a, a system um, in, in between them that's going to be responsible for managing, actually generating the key pairs initially, going and requesting the certificates, installing the certificates, and taking care of the updates, rotations, etc. of those keys. Obviously, if you're going to have a system like this, you want to make sure you've got something that supports all the different platforms you've got so it can automatically do that provisioning. And a critical piece is that you provide a console for those administrators um, so that now you can have separate credentials for each one of them so you can identify which administrators are uh, doing which operations because when we still just had them directly accessing the private keys, they all use the same password and so you know now we end up with a lot of mixing and matching of people that might be doing things by providing separate credentials now we can separate things we can give them different rights and so we can assign you know one group of administrators permissions to this uh, set of uh, systems and a management of the private keys and certificates for those and then a separate group for the um, set of orange systems that we had shown or the orange keys that we had shown before um, Finally, as we're assigning those access privileges, we can actually restrict access to who's going to be able to download a private key. So they can, in fact, say, hey, I want to get a certificate and a private key deployed to these systems, but they can't necessarily export that private key. So they don't have direct access. They can't make a copy of it. One other very good practice is to make sure that you've got dual control or workflow so that as one of these administrators performs an operation, it doesn't actually go into, an, into effect until somebody else goes and reviews that uh, operation beforehand to make sure that whatever they're doing um, is the uh, correct and, and uh, approved operation. Now with this, once you've taken and, and you've taken this approach, now you can do entitlement reporting. Um, in addition, um, if you implement a system that does full logging of, of all operations, now you've got a full audit trail of everything that they've done. So you can take an, at any point and say, hey, I need to be able, able to run a report that shows me all the entitlements, who has access to what, what access they have, and also what operations have they performed. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how you can improve the security of your private keys after you've had a chance to go in and see how your groups are currently managing those private keys. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, session and uh, look forward to seeing you in another one. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.